Hey guys, we're back for some more standard. Um, yeah, it's been a couple days here and definitely had some fun with the qualifier weekend. Ended up going two and two, so didn't quite um, make it into day two, but did still win a couple thousand gems, so that was great. And yeah, just had a lot of fun playing and I really enjoyed porting kind of this deck over into Alchemy and it did surprisingly well. Ended up going 4-0 in a... Um, best of three play-in, and then ended up going two and two in the uh, actual day one of the qualifier weekend. So yeah, really happy with it. But um, moving back to standard, I'm excited to kind of start grinding the ladder here a little bit more. Um, I My rank has dropped a little bit just because of the uh, decay. I haven't played standard in a couple days, so I think we're now maybe at about 97% um, for Mythic. So... Yeah, we'll jump in here, get some more games under our belt. And if you're new here, thank you so much again for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. If you do like my content, please consider subscribing, maybe sharing it with a friend of yours who might also like my content. And for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for returning and giving your support. It really does mean the world to me. So um, kind of hopping back into standard here. No major changes yet to the deck. I kind of like where everything is at right now. And I had to shift things around quite a bit with Alchemy just because, you know, you didn't have access to the same pool of cards. So I think before making major changes here with Standard, um, I really like how the deck has been performing so far. So we're just going to go ahead and jump in. Um, I do have the sideboard here, even though it is best of one. Um, so if you do end up taking this into best of three, I really do think that the sideboard plan is a good one. And so... There'll be a link here in the description and also at the end of the video if you do want to see earlier videos here for this deck just to kind of go over the sideboard plan. But uh, yeah, let's jump in. If you do really like my content and you want to, you know, leave a tip, thank me, um, there is a way to do it. So if you go to the little more icon, um, you can actually donate via super thanks. So if you want to leave a tip, um, I greatly appreciate it. You don't have to, but if you want to show your support and your thanks, there's another way to do that. And you can do that right in the, um, through YouTube here. So, all right, let's get into some games. Hope everybody had a really nice weekend. And yeah, it was a lot of fun playing in the tournament. Um, I think I might be trying to focus a bit more on, um, I know like next month is gonna be the standard um, qualifier weekend, which I'm very excited about. So hopefully I can get qualified for that. Um, yeah, and I had a lot of fun just doing a draft of Murders at Karlov Manor. Um, I've been watching, you know, a couple different channels on Limited, and I do love Limited as well. So I might do some more limited in the future, but standard is definitely going to be sort of my bread and butter. Um, by far my favorite format. Uh, not sure what's going on here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, opening hand looks great. And one of the nice things here with standard is that you do have access to cards like Kumano Faces Kakazan, which is not available in Alchemy. So... <laughs> Really nice to have access to that, because it's such a powerful card. Alright, so up against Golgari. Gonna lead out here with Kumano faces Kakazan. And then depending on what they do here... If they leave mana up, I think I'm just gonna go for the Codebreaker. Okay, since we've just got a Forest up... We can probably push like Swift Spear plus Rage. This is a decent time for it, I think, because they most likely won't have um, an answer here with a single forest. It is a little bit dicey to play it later if they leave mana up. Uh, the other consideration is just running out the Code Breaker. But I think there's enough of a benefit here to just get the damage in now. So I think I'm going to go for it.
Yeah, and there's the Glissa. So unfortunately, we're gonna need some way to get around that. So I think the plan here is just to kind of flood the board a little bit, since uh, Glissa can just kill anything. Um, so probably just Kumano into Codebreaker and then set up for Sokens in, try to push some more damage. We could also kind of, the other option here is to go like Codebreaker to try to draw some more cards, but I think you know, that takes a little bit, takes a little bit more. Uh, we don't have the mana for it right yet. It's consideration though. It might also help just trying to find an answer here for Sunslayer. Yeah, I'm kind of torn. I mean, like, they're still at 16, and they're going to be gaining some more life here, like, potentially with Cottage. So I think, it, actually, this is actually maybe a decent play, playing this face down, just given the fact that they've got the Glissa. Okay, well, we did actually just natural draw the lightning strike, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. I guess in light of that, yeah, we just push. Then we can push for five with Swift Spear uh, and then just try to like set up for flipping this next turn. Okay, and they've got the breach, unfortunately. Although, all things considered, that was pretty good. One of the nice things, though, is that we've got all these spells in our yard, so now we can just flip Codebreaker, and that feels pretty good. So here I think we just push. Yeah, like because we can squee, get the counter, just shove with everything. Unfortunately, we don't have quite enough mana for Sokens and also we need like one extra mana for that. But this is still pretty good. Triplets is definitely pretty good. Definitely a little bit ballsy of them to be attacking with the Bramble Familiar here. Um, let's see. So now if we push all out. They do have swamp, so they potentially could have cut down. But if they don't... 
So we need three mana for Sokens in. We can push with a Foundry, two tokens. So they block like these four. Yeah, and they're just <laughs> figuring out the math. Yeah. Opening hand looks great. Now that I'm playing Scapegoat, like sometimes I want to like lead with Scapegoat over Swift Spear. Just because like we can go like into Codebreaker and if they have something there, it's kind of nice. Um, Swift Spear is obviously amazing also. But I think I kind of want to go Scapegoat into Codebreaker here. Okay, so we are up against blue white control. So here they're probably like, we can do like the turn three check to see if they've got temporary lockdown. So I'm kind of a little bit disincentivized from like going Swift Spear plus Kumano faces Kakazan. I would otherwise love to, but I think we need to wait past turn threes to see if they've got it. So I think we just push. Question is, do we lightning strike this turn or next turn? It's like, we'll have the full four mana to do it next turn. <sighs> Definitely want to do it main phase to get like the benefits. But I think we could draw into something. So I think maybe we just lightning strike now. I could certainly see an argument for holding it, but let's go for it. This way, if they've got the lockdown, we can just set up with Swift Spear plus Kamano faces Kakazan. Yeah, there's the lockdown. So I'm definitely glad we waited. And now we can just do a full, full send. So I'm not sure if we want to go for an extra card here or just for the Wicked Roll token. Because um, right now we're pushing three or four. The card is probably better. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with, for the card here since we're not like exactly in, in striking range. And that was a nice pickup. This way they have like lockdown number two. Yeah. What a beating. At least we're like a little bit deeper into the deck. And then holding the mountain here just in case we... Yeah. I guess it's to like, we don't need to play it now. Yeah, double lockdown, definitely a beating. So here we want to do um, play with fire on our turn so this doesn't flip. Okay, and that's, we'll definitely take that.
Okay, so they've they could have like uh, either make disappear or no more lives. Either way, we've got enough mana here as is, so I think we just play it out. Could be walking into potential board wipe, but I think we gotta push damage. Okay, that's a nice pickup. Um, yeah, we probably just want to push face here. Let's see, we've got day side. So we definitely want to play Tark here. Question is, do we want to take out Jace or not? I feel like going after Jace might be a trap, but then they can draw more cards. Ugh. If we just go face, we're hitting for four, drop them to three. So we do have some nice outs there. We could draw into like potentially lightning strike. Although they will gain more life off of the Celestis. So I'm tempted to, to take out the Jace here. Just to den deny them extra card draw. And they're just like literally playing off the top of their deck. This is tough. You could see definitely going either direction here. I think we go after the Jace just because they've got this Celestis, like their life total is not as low as we want it to be. And I think. Like, I could certainly, like, I think I'd be fine if you decided to go face here instead. Yeah, especially since they've got the Mindbreaker combo here. Getting rid of the Jace feels pretty good. Do we have Squee? No Squee. Okay. I think here we just want to go face for sure. They're low enough. Okay, depopulate's rough, especially with Celestis here, since we can't make a play. And drawing the, yeah, drawing the land. Invasion is nice. 
we I suppose at this point, like they're high enough on life, it might actually be okay to go for like the invasion on the uh, invasion of Tarkir and kind of try to get Dragon going. Um, problem is, is it does die to any board wipe and also lockdown. So that's a consideration. Um, but if we drop them down to seven, like they've got, we have a long way to go. And I think that Dragon is a decent chance to potentially get out of this. Oh, actually, no, we should have played the mountain to play around No More Lies. They didn't have it, but we should have played this mountain. Man, still no squee. That's rough. Okay, there's squee. Nice. So they can block it with Foundry. Um, I think we want to try to get this invasion going, though. They have a board wipe we're definitely sunk we've only got a couple cards left in library and actually i suppose they've got just a realm breakers so that that's enough there and they have the sunfall yeah so yeah that's gonna do it unfortunately so yeah i think the um the double lockdown was super rough we could deal with one but not two good I guess we can go like scapegoat into swift spear I'd kind of rather have um, hmm I'm trying to think if there's like a reason that I'd want to play scapegoat first here I don't think so I think there's like like if we draw into like invasion of Tarkir having the swift spear on turn one is a little bit nicer so I think I'm gonna start with swift spear
Okay, this is nice. So now we can go play with fire plus and the festivities. Get them both. That feels really good. Uh, we could hold the Silkens in, although we're kind of far from it. So I think having the extra land feels pretty good. But either way, yeah, play with fire plus and the festivities feels good. Yeah, and that's going to do it. All right, thanks guys for watching. We ended up going two and one today. Let's take a look at the overall stats of the deck. Okay, so overall we are 74% win rate, uh, 39 wins and 14 losses. So still very happy with the deck. Um, just a quick recap of some of the matchups. Looks like we're almost 80% here against the Mirror and Mono Red. 11 wins, three losses. Seven and two against Boros, Convoke. Um, three and two here, so 60% against like Blue White Control. 100% 4-0 against Mono White. Three and one against Demir. Three and zero oh against Mono Black. Rakdos here one and two, so I think some of those might have been like Anvil. Some might just be like straight control versions. Um, 2-0 against, uh, maybe just didn't see enough of the deck to know exactly what we were playing. 0-2 oh against Esper. I think this might have been like Esper mid-range. Um, kind of like Esper Legends, but like a little bit, maybe with like uh, Wandering Emperor and stuff like that. 2-0 um, oh against Golgari. And then 1-1 one and one here against Sultai. I think this was like a combo version that had like training grounds. 2-0 against Gruul, and then 0-1-1 against Selesnya Enchantments. So overall, still very happy with the deck. Definitely try it out. I would recommend crafting this if you haven't. And um, yeah, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks again for watching, guys. You guys are awesome. Mm -hmm.